Hey everybody, welcome to the Dr. Mom Show. Today we're splashing into my series two about acute otitis media, also known as inner ear infections. I'm so excited because we're coming to you from the pool. Say hello. Hello. Yeah, we're swimming today. Hello. So you may hear some action in the background. If you didn't look at my last show, um, again, I talked about how ear infections are diagnosed and what we look for. Don't forget, before I get started, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to like us and follow us on Facebook. And there's going to be an upcoming um, automatic draw for a surprise. So I'm still trying to figure out what that prize will be, but I'll be announcing that pretty soon. So let's get right into it. So today I'm going to talk about what causes ear infections. Again, the most common cause, and again, I'm talking about inner ear infections, not swimmer's ear, which we're at risk for because we're swimming. Hey! Wow, big splash. So as far as, oh, you want to get in? Hey. Are you going to splash? <laughs> Careful. This is what happens in the house when you have three. So as far as ear infections, the most common causes are bacteria. There are three bacteria are, that are the most common causes. Those are strep pneumoniae, moraxilla, and H influenza. And again, H influenza is different from the normal influenza that we see at flu season. We do have vaccines that we give. Again, you know, of course, these strains always change, but the Hib vaccine, which is for H influenza, and of course, um, Prevnar, which is for pneumonia seven, and also these are the vaccines that do help. But like I said, these strands do change and mutate. But it is one way that you can help protect your children. Of course, if your child, as I mentioned in my first video, is at daycare, it does increase the risk and exposure of these bacteria. But again, great hand washing, good hygiene can always help prevent this. Let's see what's going on in this corner again. What's going on now? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you going to jump? Woo! Big splash! Uh-oh, I think Luke's going for it too. Are you going? Did I go Come. Straight forward. Good. One, two, three. Come. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> continue. Um, as far as treatment for an ear infection, normally we do penicillins first. Um, the most common one is amoxicillin. Now, of course, you saw a little squash going there. Of course, let's say if your child is allergic to penicillins, depending on the severity of allergies, if it's not too bad and it's mild to moderate allergy, we usually use another class of medicines called cephalosporins, things such as ceftonir. Also, there's a shot called Rocephin or Ceftraxone that we can use for patients with ear infections. Of course, if there's really severe allergic reactions, such as anaphylaxis with penicillin, some options would be, we have some screaming over here. <laughs> some options would be things like azithromycin or Zithromax or clarithromycin. One other thing that is good to know is a lot of times, let's say we start a patient on amoxicillin, they're having fevers, they're found to have an ear infection, and let's say these patients continue to have fevers and they continue to have symptoms and don't have much improvement on amoxicillin, usually we beef up the medication to a little stronger medication called Augmentin. So, um, again, I hope this was helpful. Again, talking a little bit more about ear infections. And I hope you enjoy seeing the babies having some fun in the pool. Again, please note that this doesn't take the place of your physician or your child's physician. You should always seek medical advice from them. This is just an educational resource for you. Of course, as always, 
wash your hands, kiss your kids, love your family, and say your prayers good night. Bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Don't bye, -bye. bye bye. See you later. Bye. <laughs> All right. You take care. We'll see you next time on the Dr. Mom Show with Dr. D. Mama, please.